Today is a Friday and we're off to our very first Brit stop, or, which is in fact a pub stop as well. I don't know if they're both the same, are they? I, don't, I think Brit stops tend to be a pub car park, yes. Okay. I could be wrong. We're off to Blue Anchor Bay. What is it called? Is it the Blue Anchor Pub or Blue Anchor Bay Pub? Or? It's the Smuggler's Inn. Is it the Smuggler's Inn? <laughs> Close. Ah. But no cigar. Okay. <laughs> so it's the Smuggler's Inn in Blue Anchor Bay then? It is. Okay. And I'm not sure there's a bay after it either. I think it's just Blue Anchor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going somewhere in a pub car park. As so long as there are enough spaces. So, as you said, this is our first Brit stop. So I thought I'd be all organised and I'd give them a ring last night to say, would it be all right to stay over? Um, and I was told you can't book in advance. It's just first come, first serve. And they take a maximum of three vans. So it really is just a case of, well, you know, we'll have to wait and see when we get there. I'm sure we'll be fine, and if we're not, we'll use the tools that we have to hand and we'll find somewhere else to stop. Could be well, a lay-by, could be another pub. Yeah, we've got um, Park for Night on my phone, so we can use that. Um, I mean, I do know of a big lay-by along this road. Worst case, well not worst case scenario, because worst case scenario is we go home. <laughs> we're holding fingers and hope we get our first choice of staying in the Smugglers in Car Park. Yes, it's kind of a bit unusual for us. We're kind of doing a wing it, wing it weekend. This getaway is for three nights. We're hoping to spend each of the three nights in a different place. Yeah. We've got no idea where the next two nights are after tonight. I think it's stressful whether you pre look at where you want to go or not, to be honest, because you still don't know until you get there whether there's a space. I'm sure we'll be fine. We've ordered our food and we've done a takeaway. We're having our food in the van. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. I have the Blue Anchor Burger, which is burger with blue cheese sauce. And look at the size of these chips. They're huge. And a side of chips. And then you've got the Smuggler's Burger. I think somebody smuggled an onion ring into it. <gasps> mine, 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 mine. Me, 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 mine, mine, mine. Please, 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 please. Yep, you can have it. You don't like it. I don't like it. I like it. Morning! We've had a lovely night's sleep at the Smugglers Inn. The car park was very quiet, we had an undisturbed sleep. However, this morning, about eight o'clock, I had the brilliant idea that I wanted to move to the seafront, which is only a few hundred yards away, because I wanted to take advantage of the free parking. So, seafront parking is free. Um, you can stay for 24 hours, but you can't sleep or um, stay overnight. <coughs> Don't, don't quite figure that one, but um, yeah, wanted to make sure that we got a nice space, but <laughs> there's plenty of spaces, so we need to come up so early, but that's fine. We're going to take a walk along the seafront now, so come along with us. Open top bus, look at that. And it goes to Lindbergh. Yeah. Gone half past ten, and it's still really quiet here. There's a few cars parked down that way, and there are a few cars parked down that way. And also, I am liking the fact that there are plenty of rubbish bins. And we've just come across something called the Blue Anchor Community Toilets, which look lovely, well looked after. We've got some lovely flower boxes down there. And I believe that it's donations, which helps to keep this clean and, and upkept. So that's handy for anyone that doesn't want to use their onboard facilities. You have a toilet along the seafront here as well, and they are wheelchair accessible. This was our potential first park up of the weekend. It turns out there was a lot of people here that were looking for some deer. We didn't see any. We felt this place was a little bit too close to the road and decided to move on. We continued along the coastline and found ourselves in Lynmouth. 
There were lots of quaint little shops and we stumbled across this quirky passageway which was next to Abby's Cafe, part of the old coach house. Linton and Linmouth are twin towns. From the cliff top in Linton, we can see Linmouth, which is about 150 metres below us. Off we go to the world famous Funicular Cliff Railway. The weight of the water will take us down the track. Who's driving? The railway opened in 1890 and is the highest and steepest water powered railway in the world. The trains get close to each other at the halfway point. Linmouth approaches. The walker is a wire statue that indicates the end of the Coleridge Way, which can be seen on the map here. Let's take a walk on the Shingle Beach. Not much here for Mudlarker though. Oh look, there's the basket on the top of the salt door for lighting a beacon. Hello. We went to the beach today. Wasn't brilliant, but we didn't go for a specific purpose of mudlarking. We just went for a little walk. But I did find these objects. A couple of nicely patterned pebbles, a couple of pretty shells, and a piece of aqua glass, which is the only piece of glass found today. I did think I'd found a piece of amber, as in amber glass, and I picked it up and it squidged between my fingers. It wasn't amber glass and I had to go and find a public toilet to go wash my hands. Yes, you could have a little giggle at that. Pete giggled at it. I have to say I wasn't overly impressed. <laughs> there was nowhere we fancied staying overnight in Linton or Linmouth, so we referred to search for sites and headed off to our next location. In Exmoor, the distances are not great, but it can take time to drive these twisty and hilly roads. You never know what to expect around the next bend. We continued along the coastline through Exmoor. We found this lovely cliff top location. Woody Bay Car Park is supported by donations. We don't carry cash and made an online payment. There were quite a few vans here, but it wasn't noisy and we really enjoyed our stay here, to the point we would probably come back again at some point in the future if travelling over Exmoor. The coastline of South Wales is just about visible on the horizon. We had good views, even though the weather was overcast. After a peaceful evening at stop number two, which was the furthest point away from home on our stay, it was time to find a stop nearer home. All the good times just begun. We headed back the way we came through Lynmouth and we took in some lovely coastal views. We have let's hold on tight. We decided to take the scenic historic Porlock Toll Road, which has a 7% gradient, which avoids the 25% gradient of Porlock Hill. We found ourselves heading in and out of the clouds as we headed down the road. Sterling Moss's sister Pat managed to drive the length of this road in less than four minutes in the 1960s. Before I sleep. Construction of the road started in the 1840s, employing local people after the Napoleonic Wars. If we go away for a three night stay, two of the nights we like to do off grid, but then our tanks become full and we need to find a campsite to empty them and make the most of any facilities they have on site. How many nights can you off grid before you find yourselves having to check into a campsite to use their facilities? We were hoping for the empty pitch on the left, and yes, we did get it. Oh, no 
The gentle noise of the rain and the river contributed to the relaxed feel of this well-appointed site. Morning. Good morning. It's now Monday and we've had a lovely stay at Buckham Hayes Farm in West Luckham. The weather is misty, rainy again today, but that's fine. It was actually quite nice to look out the window and see these trees disappearing and coming back into view last night as the clouds came down. You can see them at the moment, but when the clouds come down, they disappear. We're going to make a leisurely drive back home now. We're going to go via Minehead and have a look along there. We've had a lovely week and haven't we? Yes, we have. Oh, um, look, let me just interrupt you. There's somebody taking a tree for a walk in front of us. Not an everyday occurrence. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lovely weekend, as you were saying. Um, exploring Exmoor? Exploring Exmoor, that's what we did. Now, I'm a bit of a control freak, and I have to say that I was nervous about not having anywhere planned to stay. I mean, we had it in our minds that we were going to stay at the Blue Anchor on the Friday night. But other than that, our plans were completely fluid. Milo is eating that carpet tile. They say never work with children and animals. Filming has been interrupted because Milo decided to chew up the carpet tile that we have just inside the doorway. Little bugger. So, before we were rudely interrupted by Milo. He just wanted to go to the toilet real bad. Okay. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah, we're gonna head back towards home. We're gonna go via Minehead Seafront. We'll see how busy or not busy it is. It's been difficult to tell. Nowhere seems to have been as busy as necessarily we expected, has it? But then again, Expo it's probably naturally not busy because the roads are so narrow and difficult. This is the main street in Minehead and it takes you along to the promenade. As we were driving along, we came across some strange vehicles. So we headed up to the roundabout so that we could turn around, come back and have another good look and video it for you guys. It seems to be that there are a couple of steam vehicles here. Do you think they've realised that they're parked on double yellow line? We're on our way home now. If you like this video, why not watch the other one that's on the screen at the moment? <laughs> 